Today, we're unlocking the power of matrices in geometric transformations. Did you know that reflections, rotations, and enlargements can all be represented using matrices? That's right. And by the end of this video, you'll be able to use matrices to transform shapes on a coordinate plane. So, what exactly is a matrix transformation? Simply put, it's a way to move, rotate, reflect, or resize shapes using a special grid of numbers called a transformation matrix. Instead of shifting each point one by one, we can use matrices to do all the work at once. This is the identity matrix, the starting point of all transformations. Think of it as the default mode of a shape. Every transformation matrix is just a clever modification of the identity matrix. Each transformation has its own matrix. We will begin with the matrix transformation of a reflection in the x-axis. We'll get the reflection matrix by tweaking the identity matrix. The values in the first column represent the point 1, 0. Reflect this point in the x-axis, and it remains as it is. So the first column in the transformation matrix will be 1, 0. The second column in the identity matrix represents the point 0, 1. Reflect the point in the x-axis, and we get 0, negative 1. So the second column in the matrix transformation is 0, negative 1. Now let's derive the transformation matrix for a reflection in the y-axis. Again, we'll get the reflection matrix by tweaking the identity matrix. The values in the first column represent the point 1, 0. Reflect this point in the y-axis, and we get negative 1, 0. So the first column in the transformation matrix will be negative 1, 0. The second column in the identity matrix represents the point 0, 1. Reflect the point in the y-axis, and it remain as it is. So the second column in the matrix transformation is 0, 1. Let's derive the transformation matrix for a reflection in the line y equals x. As always, we'll get the reflection matrix by tweaking the identity matrix. The values in the first column represent the point 1, 0. Recall that when a point is reflected in the line y equals x, the coordinate swap positions. So 1, 0 is now 0, 1. Therefore, the first column in the transformation matrix will be 0, 1. The second column in the identity matrix represents the point 0, 1. They will switch places to become 1, 0. Hence, the second column in the matrix transformation is 1, 0. In deriving the transformation matrix for a reflection in the line y equals negative x, We'll recall that when a point is reflected in the line y equals negative x, the coordinates swap positions and change signs. So 1, 0 is now 0, negative 1. Therefore, the first column in the transformation matrix will be 0, negative 1. The second column in the identity matrix represents the point 0, 1. They will switch places and change signs to become negative 1, 0. Hence, the second column in the matrix transformation is negative 1, 0. Now let's put our focus on deriving the transformation matrix for each rotation. We will begin with a clockwise rotation of 90 degrees about the origin. In the identity matrix, the values in the first column represent the point 1, 0. Rotate this point 90 degrees clockwise, and we'll end up at 0, negative 1. Therefore, the first column in the transformation matrix will be 0, negative 1. The second column in the identity matrix represents the point 0, 1. Rotate 0, 1, 90 degrees clockwise, and we'll end up at 1, 
zero. Hence, the second column in the matrix transformation is one, zero. To get the matrix for the 90 degrees anti-clockwise rotation, we go back to the identity matrix. The values in the first column represent the point one, zero. Rotate this point 90 degrees anti-clockwise and we'll end up at zero, one. Therefore, the first column in the transformation matrix will be zero, one. The second column in the identity matrix represents the point zero, one. Rotate zero, one, 90 degrees anti-clockwise and we'll end up at negative one, zero. Hence, the second column in the transformation matrix is negative one, zero. To get the matrix for the 180 degrees rotation, we go back to the identity matrix as always. The values in the first column represent the point one, zero. Rotate this point 180 degrees clockwise or anti-clockwise and we'll end up at negative one, zero. Therefore, the first column in the transformation matrix will be negative one, zero. The second column in the identity matrix represents the point zero, one. Rotate zero, one, 180 degrees clockwise or anti-clockwise and we'll end up at zero, negative one. Hence, the second column in the transformation matrix is zero, negative one. Note that a 270 degrees clockwise rotation is the same as a 90 degrees anti-clockwise rotation, while 270 degrees anti-clockwise rotation is the same as 90 degrees clockwise rotation. The transformation matrix seen here can be used to summarize rotations through an angle theta, with center at the origin. Note that the rotation angle theta represents the angle of rotation in the anti-clockwise direction. So to get the matrix transformation for a 90 degrees anti-clockwise rotation, we substitute 90 for theta, and we get the same matrix we did before. To get the matrix transformation for a 90 degrees clockwise rotation, we substitute 270 for theta. Since the 90 degree clockwise rotation would mean that the anti-clockwise angle of rotation is 270 degrees. To get the matrix that represents enlargements with center at the origin and scale factor K, we simply multiply the identity matrix by the scale factor. So the transformation matrix for enlargements is K, zero, zero, K. Here's something really cool. Suppose an object goes through two transformations. For example, the point P at minus two, four goes through a reflection in the Y axis, followed by a 90 degrees clockwise rotation about the origin. The reflection in the Y axis will transform the point to two, four. The 90 degrees clockwise rotation will transform two, four to four, negative two. Note that we didn't have to do the transformation separately. Instead, we could have multiplied the two transformation matrices together to get a combined transformation matrix. In this case, the y-axis reflection matrix multiplied by the 90 degrees clockwise rotation matrix, and we get the matrix that represents the combination of both transformations, zero, one, one, zero. Multiply the original point by this matrix, and we get the point four, negative two. That means instead of applying transformations one at a time, we can pre-compute them into a single matrix. Math efficiency at its finest. In closing, let's look at this exam question. The matrix M maps R to R image means that M times R is equal to R image. 
Similarly, the matrix M maps T to T image means that M times T is equal to T image. Let's expand the first equation. The matrix M is 0, A, B, 0, times R, which is 7, 2 is equal to 2, negative 7. Multiply the top row by 7, 2, we get 0 times 7, plus A times 2, negative 7, 2, and multiply the bottom row by 7, 2. We get B times 7, plus 0 times 2. Solve, and we get A equals 1, and B equals negative 1. If we expand the second equation, we'll get the same solution. And there you have it. Matrix transformations make geometric transformations faster and more powerful. Now it's your turn. Grab a pencil and practice some matrix transformations. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to Adobe Math Lab, and hit that notification bell for more awesome math lessons. See you in the next one.